Hello everyone, my name is Maria and I'm a project management for Erasmus Plus co-funded projects in ISQE, a technological company in Lisbon that specializes in e-learning experiences. Today, I'm here with you to talk about digital means for open education resources co-creation. We have in our hands today four topics. The first is about team perspective, how to get your team ready for co-creation. The second is about your individual perceptive, how to get ready for co-creation. The third is about how to overcome the disadvantages of open education resources co-creation. And the fourth is a case study, ISQE's methodology case study. First topic, how do you get your team ready for co-creation? You need to focus on weaknesses, strength, and your field of advantage. Get to know your team. What is exactly co-creation? It's about developing a product or a service in a collaborative way. It's a scenario where sharing ideas and looking for solution benefits the final product. Everyone, everyone's contribution counts. Communication is key to getting your team ready. You need to have a clear goal and explain the purpose of the co-creation in order to motivate and build trust within your team members. You should diminish pressure by making doable tasks, break them up and be realistic about the goals. The team needs to know what role they play. And also you need knowledge and perspective. The team needs to be provided with the know-how in order to be able to engage in the co-creation. You should prepare questions, make the purpose clear, also clarify the problem and state the main goal. It should be clear and clean. We went through the main important points of how to get your team ready for co-creation from the team perspective. But it is important to notice that to conduct a co-creative project, it is necessary to have someone to guide the process and maintain the balance. This leads us to our second point of today. How do you get ready for co-creation from your point of view, an individual perspective? Entering a co-creation project raises different challenges for each person with different difficulties and also different weaknesses and strengths. You may have some inertia or fear of the unknown. It can be difficult to start. You can have some doubts of whether you can do it, how do you do it, what will happen if the consequences are not what you expected or if the results doesn't go accordingly to the plan. Here, you should really be able to trust yourself, trust in your abilities, in your know-how, in your expertise and also try to communicate with your team um, in order to be able to brainstorm on the difficulties that you are going through and maybe you even have some shared concerns. Also, you can have some lack of motivation. Um, it can be difficult to find a meaningful purpose, but here it's important to rely on your autonomy and your mastery of the subject. Trust is also a very important issue. You should be able to share values and points of view with your team and also balance this with, perform, with performance according to plans and meeting the expectation. Trust goes both ways, so make sure you and your team are, have these points well established. Also, it's important to know that these ideas were not invented here. You should be able within your team to cooperate, to participate, engage and invest in the process. Then here, the main advice that I can give is to listen to each other within the team in order to be able to really contribute to the process. So are you up for the challenge now? On our third topic for today, 
we are going to be talking about how to overcome the obstacles of open education resources co-creation. So, what are some of the issues that we can come up with during the co-creation process? We will find some connectivity issues. We can find troubles in decision-making, in the language we use, in the attention span, and the ownership of the ideas. When it comes to connectivity, there's seemingly no excuse to not collaborate within your team. So what really is the problem? Interactivity might be easier than ever, but true productive value creating collaboration is not. How do you fix this? You need to find a way to improve meeting efficiency, schedule some times, and really make the overall discussion productive. When it comes to the decision making, it is sometimes difficult to make everyone agree with the upcoming result. Nonetheless, it is necessary to have decisions. So how do you make the best decision? You should keep in mind that it should be the better decision for the project and not for individual opinions. It should be the decision that has the most value and you shouldn't go for more than 30 minutes making this decision. Otherwise, it just becomes a cycle of thinking with no results. When it comes to language, it can be easy to fall into the trouble of not understanding how to communicate when there are different languages. You can always um, go to translation apps and websites that can help you with this, but also keep in mind that the understanding can be different in different languages. So make sure you try to find someone from different languages, different cultures, to at least make a revision and see if the translation is being well done. It's not always about translating, but also about localization. When it comes to attention spam, there can be some issues here, some critical sense when communicating. Information can get lost in the communication lines and your team might not be able to retain the most important info. Here, you can create a guideline with some clear information and clear guides so that everyone knows where they are and what's the state of the process at that moment. Make sure everyone has a checkpoint for information. When it comes to ownership, it can be a problem when equal partners don't have the same finances and resources. It's important to remind yourself that if you work as a team, you own as a team. And so everyone's contribution should be valued and respected. It's a collaboration and a co-creation process after all. Finally, we are coming into the fourth point of today, case study. What is ISQE's methodology? What do we do in my company? ISQE has a co-creation methodology from start to finish. We have different teams, we focus on communication and we share a single purpose. We start with the pedagogical architecture. We have three elements involved in the process, the client, the instructional design team, and the multimedia development team. First, the client identify its needs. They specify and define whatever they are seeking. And they also make a definition of the technical details that they're looking for. This comes to a conception of technical content. So the client then passes on to the instructional design team that analyzes the technical content. The instructional design team designs and presents a pedagogical architecture and defines the methodology that will be used. Then this goes for analysis, validation and approval from the client. And all of this constitutes the pedagogical architecture definition. After approval from the client, there are two ways. 
the instructional design team designs materials for face-to-face -face or blended training without storyboards. They define and design support materials, for example, like chronograms, training regulation, course guides, session plans, assessments, and some other documents that will allow for the client to be able to have a preview of what the project will be. And also they make a conception of storyboards. The development team models a storyboard, and then both teams present this to the client, which will once again analyze, validate, and approve. After this, both teams, instructional design and multimedia development, make the remaining storyboards to present once again to the client. It's a really interactive process and it's important to do so, so that no mistakes are made and everyone's expectations are met. We arrive at the content factory. After the storyboard analysis from the instructional, develop, instructional design and the multimedia development, the multimedia development goes on to developing the modules. They pass it on to the instructional designs in order for them to do some quality tests. And then they once again go back for the client for approval and validation. Once the client approves the first modules, the development team makes the rest of them, thus completing the course, once again, sending for it to a validation. And then, it comes back to our team of instructional designers and developers to make some functional tests and make sure everything is working just fine. It goes for the client to final approval. After this, the client can either ask for translations if it's seeking to implement it in the multicultural uh, environment, or it can make it available on their platform. And so it can be required to have some maintenance. This again goes on to the development team who will maintain this. We finish this with a quote from Jeff Mulgan on the challenges of co-creation. Lots of co-creation is happening around the world. What is lacking is a real-time assessment of which of these are working and which aren't. Instead, there's a stream of books and articles saying it is all wonderful and that's actually not helpful because then people make unnecessary mistakes. I hope this was clear for all of you. It's important to organize the co-creation process in order to achieve progress. Thank you.